So here are the analog voltmeter and the analog ammeter. Now don't discard them just because they're analog. They are very good instruments and they do give you a reading fairly quickly. The um, both of these, you'll notice there's a little dial up front, and that's how that's where you do all your reading. Each dial has multiple scales, of course, because uh, in order to accommodate a large range of voltage, um, you can select different scales. With the voltmeter, the scale selection is down here with this dial. Um, it gives you one, two and a half, five. What these mean is, say I'm on the five volt scale. It means when the needle gets to the very end, it's reading 5 volts. So that's going to help us determine which line to read. But we'll get into that in detail a little bit. Otherwise, the voltmeter is quite simple. You just got the 1 and 2 connections, the positive and negative. The ammeter is a little more intimidating in the sense that there's like more terminals going on. But all it is is you always, always use the negative as your negative. And where the positive goes in, that's what's going to select your scale. So if I want it at two and a half amp scale, I'll put the positive in my two and a half amps. So let's just do a real simple example of reading something. Here I have a set of three batteries in series. So the voltage I would expect would be four and a half volts. And so if I hook this up. I get a reading of about four and a half volts. Now, what you really want to do with these scale is you want to use the smallest scale without full swinging it to get the most precise reading. So if I increase more, yes, the, the result fits, but the needle doesn't go as far and the scale is not as fine. So we want to reduce this until we get a full swing. Full swing meaning the needle gets all the way past the end. That doesn't really hurt the instrument, but it, we can't get a reading from it. So. So that's full swing, so we go one further up, and that is the smallest scale we can use without it full swing, and that's how we get the most accurate reading. Um, the one last thing is, if for whatever reason you weren't sure of the polarity of things, and you hook it up backwards, it doesn't actually hurt the instrument. All it will do is, instead of sending the needle going this way, it will send the needle going the other way. So you can see that it's kind of crashing against the side. Um, when you see that though, all you do is you just switch these two terminals back around and you'll be safe. So I also like to talk about the um, how you hook up both of these meters as part of a circuit. So here I have a fairly complicated circuit with quite a few components. Um, and if we want to say get the voltage of any one of these components, it's actually really easy. With the voltmeter, that's the easy one. You don't have to touch or change the circuit at all because the voltmeter goes in parallel. You kind of use these two ends as kind of probes to go around whatever you want the voltage of. Say if I want the voltage of this light bulb, I take my two end and I go at the two end of my component just like that. Then I should be reading some amount of voltage, the amount of voltage that goes across that light bulb. That's a simple one, voltmeter. The ammeter, it's a little bit trickier because it has to go in series. So then the very first step, step zero as I say of using the ammeter is to disconnect the circuit somewhere. But where? Basically you pick up the component whose current you want, the current that just goes through it. So say if I want the current that goes through the same light bulb, this guy, you pick that up and you pick one of the sides to separate. So I've disconnected the circuit. And in the disconnection, I have two ends, so that's where the two ends of my ammeter goes. So what it is, is we're diverting the current that would have normally go straight through, through our ammeter and back out. Okay, and finally, we need to know how to get the actual number reading and the uh, uncertainty off of these devices. Uh, they both work pretty much the same, so I'll demonstrate the ammeter here. Right now, the ammeter is on the uh, 1 amp scale. So, what that means, once again, is that when the needle gets to the very end here, I should be getting exactly 1 amp. Now, then, 
which means which scale should I read? There's 10, 5, and 25. None of them says 1. But the easiest to use is probably we take the 10, do whatever reading, and divide that number by 10. So instead of 10, it becomes 1. So that's what we're going to do. Now let's read the needle with these ammeters and maybe some of the voltmeters. A couple of them has a mirror in the middle. And what that is, is it prevents this parallax. So right now the um, device is slanted, so you can see that the shadows don't line up if you want. When you make the shadow exactly line up with the uh, needle itself, then you know that you're looking at the needle head on and you're not having any parallax issues. Okay, so let's start reading. So right now we're reading on the top scale. So let's see, 0, 2, between 2 and 4, it's between 2 and 3. There's five markings between 2 and 3, so each one is worth 0.2, so it's 2.2, 2.4, 2.6, 2 maybe 2.6 or 2.7, so let's say 2.7. <clears throat> but then we divide by 10, so it's 0.27 amps. That's how we read this particular scale on a 1 amp scale. Um, in terms of uncertainty, you can see the needle is very, very stable, so we can pro probably go with half the smallest division. Therefore, um, what is the smallest division? This, each small division, as we say, was 0.2 divided by 10, so it's 0 0.02, and half of that is going to give us 0 0.01. So the overall reading of this is going to be 0.27 plus or minus 0 0.01 amps.